I'm Holly. And I'm Bridget. And this is Girls Next Level. (laughs) Welcome back to Girls Next Level, everybody. We are back with more Sarah Jean Underwood. (laughs) We know you love her. We know she's your favorite. We love her. favorite, too. Yeah. (laughs) So like we said before, we're planning on having her back so many times because even though we got so much good stuff for this interview... She was just there for so many things. And there was so much that she was a part of. And even after. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. 100%. So we have to get into all of that. And just so you know, you guys, in this conversation you're listening to, I make a Kate Middleton reference. I talk about how, you know how nobody can find Kate Middleton right now? Obviously, we know where she is now. And we wish her the best. Our prayers are with her. But um, we recorded this like a month ago. Yeah. So, (laughs) So without further ado, here's more Sarah. So eventually you would move across the street into the Playmate house. Yes. Tell us what it was like living there. Oh my gosh, it was so fun. I actually wanted to ask you guys, like, why did I get to live there? Like, who gets like who who gets to live there and why? Like, how because did we is that reach hef? down from the heavens? <laughs> That's kind of what it felt like. Them. Plucked you out of her. Is that Hef that decides? Is that like? Well, I mean, he, he always has the guys? final say, but it would be because we would be like, oh, so and so should move in. They're mm. really nice, or this person, or that person. So we would always kind of like pick our favorites and people we knew were from somewhere else and wanted to move to LA because that house, we kind of came up with the idea of it as being like a launching pad for like, because LA is so expensive. Like we know firsthand about what it was like to, you know, move there and, you know, it's so expensive and everything. So we would kind of like pick our favorite people that were from out of town. Nice. And And it would have to be people, it would have to be people that we liked and that we knew were going to go out with us Mm -hmm. and have fun with us. We didn't want anybody to live over there that was like, oh, I don't want to go out or I'm not coming with you guys or wasn't fun if they did or Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So that was, for me, one of the big things. Like this is is the point of over there. We want like a big group. Yeah. Because we didn't want to add any more girlfriends. So the more girls that came out with Hef and just that weren't. the pressure off a little bit probably. Yeah. Yeah. Who who all lived there with you? Okay. So when I first moved in, it was Allison Waite was already there, who was a playmate from my year. Crystal Camden was there. And Amanda Page, who was also a playmate. Oh, yeah. Um, She was there for a little bit. I think she had like a kind of a hard time in LA. I don't really want to speak for her. She was a really sweet girl, but she didn't like stay there for that long. And then after she moved out, Janine Habeck moved in and that was it was pretty much me Allison and Janine were like best friends so it was pretty much us and then Crystal most of the time and then towards the very end kind of right around playmate of the year was like being decided and stuff Monica moved in but Mm -hmm. even then she was there but she was never there like she pretty much like stayed up at Kendra's in in Kendra's room I Mm -hmm. think most of the time it was very rare that she like stayed there and like hung out with us or whatever but yeah okay so you're living at the other house and Allison Way and Janine are Mm -hmm. both there with you and are they both in your year yes is is Monica as well yes okay so there's like four of you living there that are all competing for playmate of the year yes what was it like competing for playmate of the year was there a lot of competition was it friendly so I don't know where this came from. I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know where it started, but as far as I looked at Playmate of the Year, it was between Allison and Monica. And I felt like Allison and Monica knew it was between Allison and Monica. I felt like Janine and I knew it was between Allison and Monica. Everyone in my mind knew that it was between those two. So like there was no, comp. <laughs> so me and Janine, Janine and I were like, really close to Allison because we'd all lived together for like a really long time. So we were kind of like the three. I really liked Monica, but like she wasn't there until the end. So really, and I'll, I mean, if you guys interview them, I, I feel bad speaking for them, but this is just how I saw it. They didn't like each other. They saw each other as each other's competition, Allison and Monica. And Janine and I were friends with both of them. And so, yeah, I think like we were just like really happy, hoping, you know, one of them gets it, we'd be happy for both of them, but neither Janine and I thought we were in the running for it really at all. So wow. I don't know where That's that came so crazy from. to me. Do you remember what you thought, Bridget? Like if you thought there was a winner? See, yeah. I 100% always thought it was going to be Sarah, but I feel like I thought there was a second possibility. Like if it isn't, it's going to be this person. But I thought I was always pretty much pretty what? confident. I thought it was either going to be you or Allison. And remember we did that episode where they kind of focused in, like you took Janine out, Kendra took Monica out, and I took you and Allison out. We went to Hooters. Mm -hmm. And I was like, 
I got the two candidates that are in the run. Not that I don't love Janine and Monica, obviously, yeah. but I was like, I get to take like the winners out. <laughs> yeah. Unbeknownst to me, I had no idea. It was it was never even in my mind that I was possibly in the running for it. I mean, it was played up that way, but like it was always in my mind between Allison and Monica. I didn't have a shot in hell. So I was very wow. surprised. Were they surprised too, you think? I think, yeah. Heck yeah. I mean, I know like, I think it was like, it, if you watch the video when Allison greets me, I'm like in her ear and I'm like, I'm so sorry, Ellie. I'm so sorry. Like I wish, I felt so bad because I think we all kind of thought like her, she had it, you know? And cause Allison, like, she was like so educated. She was like, had a graduate degree. She was so well-spoken. She was so beautiful. Like she just seemed like the perfect like candidate for it. It was like, obviously it was her. I was like, I don't know. I still to this day don't understand why I got it. But yeah, I think that it was it, it was a hard hit for her. She, that night was really awkward. Poor Janine was trying to be like so happy and supportive for me. And then Allison was like, it was a tough, I think, you know, she needed like 24 hours to yeah. be like, wow, this possible idea I had for my life isn't happening now. And so I think that was like really hard for her. And Janine was like trying to be supportive of me. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to be supportive of Allison. And Allison was trying to be supportive of me. But we we're all kind of like going through like our different things. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So that was hard. Did you feel like people were vying for it ahead of time? Like were people doing things to actively like compete? As far as like us four, because I, I mean... I don't know. Like, we're all trying to be on our best behavior with, like, the jobs because part of it is, like, the promotions. Pat Lacey, people, like, weigh in. So you're all we're all trying to be, like, extra nice and whatever, you know, as far as, like, flirting with Hef or something, you know, like, mm -hmm. not – no, I didn't really see that. You know, Monica was always spending a lot of time up at the mansion, like, with Kendra. So I was like, oh, well, she's so close to Kendra and she's always up there. Maybe that's going to give her a leg up or something. But, like, I don't know. I guess the – as, like – like trying to win would just be like being in our best behavior and like trying to be as nice and accommodating as possible or whatever but I mean not even me I really didn't I wasn't even really trying I did not think I was gonna get it at all tell us about finding out you got playmate of the year on camera because didn't they trick you and like say you got a letter that you needed to come get or yeah. something <laughs> they told me I had a registered letter and I was like I had never heard that term before in my life I was like <laughs> what the heck is a registered letter <laughs> And so I went up this there. old fogey term. Yeah. You know? I was like, heck. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go get this thing. Whatever the heck that is, is waiting up there for me. And I went up there and I still like, there were, there weren't cameras like following me up mm -hmm. there or anything like that. I literally thought I was going up there to get something from them. But then as I, I started walking through the hallways upstairs to go to Hef's office, I, a camera person and like a producer like hid behind the corner and it was like <laughs> seconds before I was gonna greet Huff and it popped in my mind then and I was like I'm getting chills right now I was like wait a minute am I not coming up here to get a registered letter did I is he about to did, am I about to get playmate of the year like I it was just like in no reality was that going to happen for me and like I was like I might find out in one second and I had like a second to process that like I might be Huff might tell me right now I'm playmate of the year wow so yeah it was it was crazy. That's that so is cool. crazy. Weren't we having a party at the other house and they called yeah. you over mm -hmm. from that? Yeah, I think we were supposed to distract everybody. Yeah, that's because we didn't want, yeah. Yeah, we were all just like hanging out. I haven't rewatched the episode yet, but I just remember like us doing something at the other house, still trying to make the other house cool. <laughs> trying to make <laughs> Bunny House happen on camera, <laughs> as I always did. Tell What did Hef say to you? Oh, gosh. Um, I think he was just like, you're our playmate of the year or something. <laughs> and I was like, just like, what? It was amazing. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was, it was tough. I, I, Allison thought she was going to get it. Possibly I thought she was going to get it. It was just a weird, hard, like, thing to kind of balance in that moment. Yeah. And Janine didn't think she was going to get it at all? I don't know. Maybe. I feel like Janine had, like, so much more confidence than I did. <laughs> so, like, maybe she did. So I don't want to speak for her. Like, that's just how I saw it. But I feel like I feel like we are kind of like, Allie, you, it's going to be you. Like, I feel like we were kind of, like, saying those things to her, if I recall. Like, Janine and I both. So what was shooting your Playmate of the Year pictorial like? And how was it different from Playmate of the Month? Oh, um, I feel like there was a lot more budget we um drove out to Santa Barbara and like shot out there um more like kind of con it was similar to mm -hmm. like the feel of my playmate kind of in the country on a farm so that was like the feel of it yeah it was it honestly like 
a bigger budget, but like still the same. It was the same crew, same exact makeup, wardrobe, photographer. Mm -hmm. Arnie was my photographer. <laughs> Again, the dreaded like the video shoot. I have like such a funny story from that. Oh yeah, tell us. Because what the Playmate of the Year video shoot is a lot more involved than Playmate of the Month. Yes. Usually they want a scene with another guy, which is awkward. Oh my God, I think maybe I did. Was there... Oh, there was a guy. There was like this. But you asked if it could be your boyfriend because that was more comfortable, right? I did, didn't I? Was yeah. he in it? Mm -hmm. He was in it. Yeah. That's the boyfriend that hadn't seen my boobs for like five years. Oh That's God, right. That's so oh, my gosh, you guys. Gosh, I haven't seen that video in so long. Um, that's right. Paul was in it. That's so funny. I just remember you telling me the story how they wanted you to do a scene where you were like getting up and there was a guy laying down and you're like, they want it to look like we just had sex. Like, yeah. this is gross. Like, it has to be my boyfriend or nobody. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to like take really, in my mind, like tasteful, beautiful, like photos of the female body. It's another thing to like make this movie with a man now and is simulating mm -hmm. like sex well well nudity like people may think sex when they see nudity like it's it, it's not in my mind like those two things are like completely different mm -hmm. so yeah that I didn't like that but I remember it was the first time I realized like I didn't have the most like the nicest vagina <laughs> like, Wait, there, there might be something what? wrong with my vagina <laughs> on that shoot like <laughs> it had never like I had never really looked at many vaginas yeah. I honestly really didn't know what mine looked like to be honest <laughs> because most playboy photos you're just kind of like standing closed you don't like open your legs mm -hmm. or like anything like that so whatever I had never really thought much of my vagina and like what it looked like but we were on that shoot shooting the video and Joyce Benelli was shooting or did my makeup for that and they had like had all these big boxes I don't even know what the theme was it was weird but we're getting ready to shoot and she like comes up to me and she's like they sent me over for this and this is so awkward for me to say but they want me to tell you to tuck it what <laughs> and I was like what she's like like your vagina they want you to like tuck your clit and I was like like my clit was like kind of showing oh or something God. like beyond my lips <laughs> Oh my God. And I was so mortified that like, yeah. first of all, I just, I had no idea like that you weren't, your clit was or wasn't supposed to like go to it. Like, I just hadn't even thought about those things. And the fact that like this, there was a conversation going on behind camera while I was up there that like she needs to fix her vagina. Anyways, it was mortifying. <laughs> I've had like a complex with my vagina oh, like no. ever since then. That was a thing though. I remember when I worked at the studio, I was showing half like options of photos of one of the playmates. And he's like, yeah, you need to retouch that because she had an Audi. Yeah. And of course, like the Playboy photos are always very tasteful. So it wasn't like anything crazy. But he's like, a vagina should look like this. And he drew a V with like a line in the middle. Yeah. And he's like, I don't want to see anything else. And I was it's like, crazy. Ugh. Yeah. I don't know. That's, yeah. I, I, yeah, new, it was news to me. So. That, <laughs> she doesn't like it. <laughs> no, because I just think they are all different shapes right. and sizes and, and all different. Mm -hmm. And it sucks that you still have a complex Oh, about I do. It. I totally do. It's yeah. a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Like, how dumb. I'm like, oh, it's not, it's not good. It's not desirable. And I'd never, I mean, of course, you know, whatever. I had many insecurities, but that wasn't one. So I'm like, add it to the list. <laughs> 420 is just around the corner. Luckily with Via, you can celebrate the right way. Via's hemp products are the Swiss army knife of wellness. Need to chill out after a long day? There's a Via gummy for that. Dealing with anxiety or stress? There's a gummy for that. Want to set the mood in the bedroom? There's a gummy for that too. Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and low dose of THC into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. We're talking about pairing aphrodisiac herbs with a mild amount of THC. Their best-selling High Love Gummy will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. Vaya also offers a wide array of other gummies with and without THC, each with their own unique strengths and effects catered for your routines. Whether you're looking for better sleep, relief, or a nice buzz, Vaya has something for you. And the best part? Vaya legally ships in all 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. No medical card required. So if you're 21 plus, check out our link to Vaya's website in our description for 15% off. 
There are several things that I love about Via Gummies. First of all, the flavors. I mean, strawberry crush, guava berry, strawberry lemonade, blueberry lemonade, grapefruit. I mean, I could go on and on, but the flavors are just delicious. If you're 21 plus, check out the link to Via in our description and use the code Next Level to receive 15% off. Oh, and after you purchase, they ask where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Celebrate 420 the right way with Via. Happy holidays. Um, had you been to any of the Playmate of the Year luncheons before your no. own? No. That my own was my first one. I had no idea what to expect. Wow, that's so yeah. crazy. I know it is. Yeah. I was so nervous. Did they give you any help with like writing your speech or anything? No. <gasps> No, nothing. Well, you did a great job. <laughs> I, I, but I like I, I spent like a week agonizing over that speech, and I had written so many like drafts and come up with all this stuff, and like I still didn't like it, still didn't feel right. So I was extra nervous, like walking into it. I, yeah, I just ended up just thanking people and like kind of winging it because whatever I wrote still didn't. It felt like I was trying to prepare like the best speech or something, mm-hmm. and it wasn't necessarily from the heart. And so I was like, you know what? I just don't want to, if I can't come up with something that doesn't feel genuine, then I'm just going to talk from the top of my head. So your Playmate of the Year dress is so iconic. It is. No, people talk about it. Like I'll see TikToks and people will say like how your bangs had a chokehold on them through the 2000s. And then people are in the comments like talking about your dress and how they can't get your dress out of their heads and stuff. So it was custom, right? Like you designed it? I did, yeah. Tell me about the inspo. Yeah, I just, you know, I always felt like a really like low cut V was always really flattering, like always made my boot, my like little boobies look like (laughs) really nice. And so I knew I wanted that. And I also wanted the back to like be really open and that kind of like it was like a long kind of I can't remember if it was right above the knee or right below the knee but that was kind of like the cut Mm -hmm. back then that everyone wore. Yeah and I picked yellow like yellow was my favorite color. I think the designer picked the red like I just knew I wanted low cut in the front low cut in the back and I wanted it yellow. And I wanted it skin tight and then I think she was the one that like put the red like embellishments around it. It was so cute. Thank you. I love it. I remember I did your Playmate of the Year present to match the dress. That was (laughs) amazing. (laughs) You're always the best gift giver. And like the presentation on the wrappings are always spot on. Well, speaking of gifts and stuff, what were your prizes? Okay, so I got a Mini Cooper, like a convertible Mini Cooper and $100,000. Did you get the motorcycle? No motorcycle. Mini Cooper, you, I didn't get to choose. Sometimes I heard that girls did get to choose. Yeah, I got the Mini Cooper. I thought it was perfect for me. It was like small and little and like I'm like this tiny little short girl. I loved it to death. So cute. Yeah, I drove it for a really long time until I moved back to Oregon. And then it just like yeah. it was a convertible. So it like wasn't yeah. practical to have <laughs> up there. But I did I did wreck it when I was in L.A., like still living at the mansion. I don't think – did I tell you this? Wait, this – as soon as you said that – I'm like, oh my God, I remember this. Yes. But tell, because I don't remember, but I like something is sparking. It kind of involves you a little bit. (laughs) So So maybe that's why I know. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to go like do the stairs in Santa Monica or something or work out. And I was leaving the mansion. I had just like gotten lunch up at the mansion and I was leaving. And all the way Ray was like coming in as I was like going out. And like, I love Ray. We're friends. We've known him for years. I'm always like, hi, Ray. He's mm-hmm. like, hi. And then he's like, Sarah, we give each other like a hug and like a little side kiss. And he's like, I'm getting ready to go. And he's like, we should go to lunch sometime. And I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's like, no, no, I, re- I would really like to take you to lunch sometime. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, what what, what just this? happened? Like, no. All the way Ray is like asking me out right now. Like, I was just so like, what oh my god no and I'm like oh no this is gonna be so awkward now yeah. like now I'm gonna have to like a av- like avoid it or like whatever and see him up here all the time I was like oh, this isn't happening no Ray why why are you doing this and so I was so flustered and I get in the car in my Mini Cooper and I texted you because I think I might have been like visiting you or hanging out with you mm. maybe just in eating lunch or something but I texted you and I was like oh my gosh like Ray just like asked me out on a date and then I get in the car and drive and I'm just get on to Wilshire 
and my phone goes off and it's you responding. And I'm just, I'm like, I'm like really, I, I don't know, like it really freaked me out because like it's just someone you see all the time and you just know it's going to be awkward. So I was just yeah. like really freaked out by it in a way. And my phone like beeped and like I looked down. And then I looked up and like I slammed into Aww. someone. And yes, yeah, so and then I wrecked my Mini Cooper because of all the way, Ray. Thanks a lot, Ray. God damn it, Ray. <laughs> See, this is why well, I love At least it's Ray's fault, not my fault. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this is why I love getting these other perspectives because there's some stuff that we just didn't see because like Ray would have never hit on a girl in front of me just because like it, it would like get back to Hef and then Hef would be mad. Oh, he'd or be something. mad about that. I don't know about, well, no, I think he would be mad. Like Hef didn't want his friends like encroaching on any girls or his girls are necessarily like hitting on the playmates I don't think mm, like I if it was a that. celebrity a celebrity could ask a playmate out mm -hmm. yeah I didn't know that Hef would have cared about that but yeah he wouldn't have liked it mm, interesting like he only wanted guys around in his circle who were like unthreatening mm. and weren't gonna go after the girls or would bring up other girls that he were girls he wouldn't be interested in for whatever reason Ray went for it though I was like oh playmate of the gosh. year at the time he's like I'm gonna ask her out the confidence <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> Well, and don't you think on a skeezy level, too, Hef would have been pissed because, God forbid, Ray gets something that Hef didn't get? Oh, he would go nuclear if yeah. Ray actually succeeded. Yeah. He would have been so mad. Yeah. 100%. Interesting. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't know. I wouldn't he, have, he wouldn't I wouldn't have had that favored seat at the dinner table anymore. Oh, shit. Oh, no. I just outed Ray. <laughs> so <laughs> as Playmate of the Year, you are expected to do a ton of press. And as we all know, doing press for Playboy can sometimes be tricky because everybody has a different idea of what it is. Was that hard for you to handle? Was it pretty easy? Did you ever have any weird moments with the press or anything you hated doing? You know, I really think the Girls Next Door show helped with a lot of the stigma around Playboy. Obviously, I can't say for sure because you know I kind of got thrown into it when all that was like being revealed but I didn't have a lot of like people trying to put me down or belittle me or like question me about like why would you do this mm -hmm. or you know all the things so no I mean I feel like man timing is everything like I just feel like I got involved at the best time when Playboy was like being reinvigorated and people were so excited about it and the stigmas were going away and like it wasn't just a guy thing girls were like mm -hmm. loving it so no I had like I, I really didn't feel like I had to do a lot of press like part yeah. of it was in the contract you have to do like 30 days worth of free press or something like that like you're obligated to do I don't know what the number was but mm -hmm. I remember thinking like oh that's a lot of work but okay whatever but they really didn't ask that much of me that's nice yeah so did you immediately get to go off traveling all over the world and represent Playboy? Dude, I put my nose down and worked so hard. I was like, I'm going to spend this year to make the most amount of money like I possibly can. I took every job I could. I was working like five days a week, not just with Playboy promotions. And actually that caused like kind of a, I, I feel like kind of caused some controversy with um, like Pat Lacey and, and Playboy promotions because they really just want to be the ones booking the jobs for you. Mm -hmm. But I was like getting like club appearances and so, like I wouldn't let them use like Playboy Playmate, mm -hmm. like, you know, to promote it or whatever. I was like doing stuff like in my own name and like just trying to like grind. Like I was like, I don't know when I'm ever gonna ever get this opportunity again to make this kind of money. So I was taking jobs with Playboy Promotions and like booking stuff on the outside and they like really don't like that. But I feel like that kind of like drove a wedge between like me and Playboy Promotions and like, you know, at the end of my year, like they really didn't hire me a lot and stuff mm. like that after that but well it was a good time to be playmate of the year because back when people were booking people for club appearances because that, was that a huge thing was That's not huge. always the case over the years yeah. so you were really were there at the perfect time I was <laughs> I was like I, I I was the perfect time and it was just so hard to pass that kind of thing up you know mm -hmm. like the Smart. club appearance type of like money I was just like I got to I got to seize this moment yeah Bridget I've heard you are addicted to wild grain I order it like every month. We are so obsessed with the fresh pasta. It's so good. But the thing that Nick bugs me about all the time is their chocolate chip cookies. Like they are delicious. And having hot, warm chocolate chip cookies is so amazing. I mean, and of course their French bread, the sourdough bread, it's all so good. I'm totally obsessed with it. 
Honestly, my wild grain box had some of the best sourdough bread I have ever tasted. Wild grain is the first ever bake from frozen subscription box for sourdough breads, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries. Every item bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less, so there's no thawing required. And you can now fully customize your wild grain box so you can choose any combination of breads, pastas, pastries, cookies. You can even build a box of only breads, only pastas, or only pastries if you'd like. For a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash next level to start your subscription. You heard me, free croissants in every box and $30 off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash next level. That's wildgrain.com slash next level or you can use promo code next level at checkout. What were some of your favorite memories promoting? Oh my God, it was all just like so much work. <laughs> I don't ever remember it being like that much fun. I mean, truly, like it was all work. Isn't that sad? That's kind of sad. I mean, my experience with Playboy was amazing and I had so much fun mm -hmm. like outside of the working, but like I did, like I told, I said before, like I didn't love the jobs. They yeah. weren't for me, like doing Playboy golf, doing the mansion events and bunny costumes. Like, okay, it looks fun and like whatever, mm -hmm. but like that was not my scene. I did not like being a host. I just can't think of like any I of that. Was... Say, I did not like being a hoe. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't. I really wasn't. There was plenty of that going around, but I wasn't one of them. No. <laughs> <laughs> the real tea. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. I don't know. I mean, you know, like anytime I think of like my favorite memories is like the opening of the Playboy Club in Vegas. Mm -hmm. But like I wasn't working. I was there with like you guys, you know, like mm -hmm. stuff like that was all like really fun. There was no expectation of me. I wasn't kind of like being carted around and like, you know, flirt with this group of guys or like entertain these VIPs or like something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not that's just not fun for me. It's fine. Yeah. Not everyone loves their job, but that's OK, you know, mm -hmm. but it wasn't fun. that part wasn't fun. Yeah. What was it like shooting the Playboy catalog? Because that was something all the Playmates wanted to do, and you got to do it a lot. And Yeah, I did it a lot. That was a really good, steady job for me. It was, like, in a shitty warehouse in, like, Jersey or Newark or mm -hmm. something like that. And so I hated that. Like, I had to fly all the way to the East Coast every time for it. And it is where I decided I was getting my boobs done because I was doing it a lot. And it would always be me and one other girl and, like, the other girl always had, like, these massive boobs. And you'd put on, like, 30 lingerie outfits a day. Mm -hmm. Just, like, bam, 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 shooting it, shooting it. And these girls would, like, put it on and just, like, instantly cleavage, like, fill it out. And, like, they'd have to put, like, tons of chicken cutlets and stuff in my bra to, like – because they want you to look – Voluminous. Voluptuous. Yes, mm -hmm. they want that look. You know, they didn't. I'm like, well, why are you guys hiring me? I don't have small <laughs> boobs. I don't have that look. But it was always like a pulling it tight and putting all these things in and stuffing it up. And like, it just made me start to feel like, oh, uh, again, like I wasn't like good enough, you know? Like, I was just constantly like being reminded that like my boobs needed to be bigger in order to look good or to be desired or whatever. And so I, sh I like called and made my consultation on a lunch break, like at Playboy a Playboy catalog shoot because I just had enough of it. I was wow. like, I'm just, I'm, I'm sick of this, you know? So whatever. I don't regret it. I love mm -hmm. my, my boobs, yeah. you know, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but it is what was like the final straw that made me like go for mm -hmm. it. It's crazy. Your playmate, playmate of the year, and you still have to worry about like, are your boobs big enough? Mm -hmm. Does your vagina look okay? Yeah. Like, it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's a, I've always known that like, that was, you know, your whole Basically, my whole adult life has been based around trying to be pretty, being pretty, being perceived as attractive. And like that has not that it's my value, but it's like my way of like earning a living is like and being able to provide for myself mm -hmm. is all relies on my looks. And like it's something that I know has affected me now. And then it's always like it's going to be a thing that like I'm going to have to like work through and like deal with and like try not to as it inevitably keeps fading, like let go of that and maybe have a bit of an identity crisis, you know, when like that that isn't what supports me anymore or I'm not desired in that way anymore. I mean, we all do to an extent, mm -hmm. but I've literally spent my whole life being a model and like surviving off of that. So it's a mind fuck. <laughs> it's very interesting. Like I know you have a ton to offer besides that. Yeah. So I'm sitting here like, 
you got nothing to worry about. But I know the feeling for sure. I worry about it all the time. Or just the feeling of like the only reason anybody cares about me or looks at me is because I look a certain way. And like what's going to happen when I'm older, you know? Mm -hmm. And and I have like this amazing like partner and I I still worry about that. I'm like, are you only with me because I was playmate of the year and like you find me attractive? Like what? I'm sure everyone worries about that kind of thing. But I think I have it like too – the upteenth like degree because yeah. of the life that like I've lived. Oh yeah, I wanted to tell you guys a story about um the Playmate of the Year cover or yes, like the yeah. issue. So I have I had like serious balls. Like I can't believe I did I hate the expression serious balls. I had like a serious <laughs> vagina <laughs> back then. Um so I wasn't We've heard. On- <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you know sometimes like Hef would put the Playmate of the Year on the cover and like sometimes he wouldn't and like my college issue cover is probably still to this day like the thing I'm like most proud of mm-hmm. because like even above Playmate, Playmate of the Year, like the cover was like the coolest thing and so I was like really hoping I would like get the cover as Playmate of the Year and when I found out I wasn't I on it like I was super bummed like oh like whatever I was Playmate of the Year what do you have to complain about but I was bummed about that I was really mm-hmm. hoping like I would get it because I shot for it and it was this girl like that was on The Apprentice they put on the cover or something like I, she was like an apprentice contestant yeah. and I cannot believe to this day I did this but like <laughs> I asked for a meeting with Hef to like well first of all me and all the girls had been talking that like we've all thought like it's really strange that he doesn't put the Playmate of the cover on the year every year like why not hype up like the Playmate of the year and like mm-hmm. build her up and put her to that like level and so I, like, got inspired to, like, talk to him, and I made a meeting with him, and I told him, like, I think that he should put the Playmate of the Year on the cover every year. I like, love that. what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> like, talking to the founder of Playboy magazine, telling him, like, how he needs to look at, like, ugh, I'm, like, so embarrassed that I even did I that. I love it, though. I cannot believe. What a snob. And what did he say? He was so sweet about it. He, like, heard me, and, like, he agreed with me. He even tried to see if they could go and put like a re he found out that it had already been like all of them had been printed so then he went and like to see how much it would cost to like put a sticker cover over top of it to like fix it or something and they told him it was too late like he heard it like he didn't laugh in my face and tell me to get the fuck out which he should have like no. honestly like that I just whatever but I but he was really sweet about it and he heard it and he agreed and he was like I think I might have made a mistake with that like it was just wild Well, I think he would have liked to have Playmate of the Year on the cover every year. I think it was more something that was like pressure from, you know, Playboy Mm. was a publicly held company. There was a lot of pressure from stockholders for sales and things like that. And they always thought having like a celebrity would bump it up. Mm -hmm. So sometimes like Kara got to be on the cover and stuff, but that's because they couldn't get a celebrity that Mm. year, you know. So So I was barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, I think he would have preferred Playmate of the Year. I think he liked the art behind an organic Playmate cover. I think everybody on the creative side of Playboy liked that better, but Mm -hmm. it was just like a A thing. Business end. You said you shot the cover. What was the, what did it look like? That was like a really stressful thing because they could not get what they wanted. Like we shot for, we shot it for so long, for so many days. Marilyn was getting stressed. Hef didn't like this. So we'd change it completely. New set, new set. A lot of it was like headshots from like here up is what they wanted. But we shot like so much, so many different themes for it. And he just wasn't liking any of it. And we were all like so stressed out. I mean, maybe that's why I didn't get it. I just didn't shoot a good cover. Oh, my gosh. I remember all those shoots because I was starting to apprentice Mm -hmm. and I was shooting like Tamara in one room with Steve. Yes. And then you were with Arnie in the other room and you had the one with the ribbon that Mm -hmm. said Playmate of the Year and the one where you were in like the bed with the flowers. And then somebody looked at it and said, wait, no, this looks like a hospital bed because it was supposed to be like romantic and sexy, but the bed was like white and then there were flowers. And so he goes, (laughs) looks like she's in the hospital. Yes, exactly. (laughs) But the one everybody loved was that outdoor headshot. Yes. Like Arnie was like, you have to see this headshot mm-hmm. you have to see this headshot and I remember that was the one I put on your scrapbook yes. and I like blew it up and put it in the front of the studio like we were all trying to get this headshot like on the cover for the cover yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah it was so pretty yeah so the audacity yeah I love the audacity I do too <laughs> We don't want anybody who doesn't have the audacity. (laughs) So during this time, the Palms in Las Vegas was like our home away from home. What are your favorite memories from the Palms? Oh, my gosh. So many good memories. Um, I always feel like a celebrity going there, like as a playmate, you know, like. They always took really good care of all of us. They always took such good care of us. I felt like 
I loved it there. Like, what a fun memory. Okay, so one memory I have, and I don't know that it's not a good one, but it's the one that, like, sticks out the most to me of all my, like, Palms stays. I don't remember if it was, like, Hef's 80th birthday or if it was the opening of the Playboy Club. You guys had come, and we were all, like, staying in the in the Hef suite, and then you guys left that night. So, like, me, Allison, Janine, we all had, like, the Hef suite to ourselves. So um, I don't know which one it was, why you guys would have come and left. Because sometimes you guys stayed. Right. But if Hef could leave the same night, he wanted to. <laughs> right. So. so it was one of those. Anyway, so we had the Hef suite like to ourselves after you guys left. And we went to like a club or a party or whatever. And I met this like very famous guy, like heartthrob celebrity <laughs> <laughs> there. And we like invited a bunch of people back to like the suite. And he came and like we were like talking all night. I don't know. I don't remember if we like kissed or whatever but like he <laughs> it was what it was one of my like most like realizing moments of like stars they're just like us <laughs> like first of all he was like he was someone that everyone had a crush on super handsome like guy and like in person not so much like he was had like a white t-shirt and it was like really dirty and had stains over on it and it's like <laughs> I already know who you're talking you about you do mm -hmm. wait I don't, know I don't. Do. I'll cut it out who is it wait I'm blanking on his name though but I know who he is he's the one that played in that movie where he Oh, that guy's a fucking weirdo. Yes, but back oh, in allegedly. the day, he was like, it was like his yeah, crime. Yeah, right? nobody oh, he's knew got, this He's gotten in that, trouble, yeah. like, mm -hmm. for sexual misconduct, like, which all makes sense now at the end of the story. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, like, his teeth weren't, like, brushed. Like, he had, like, gunk in his teeth Whoa. or whatever. But, like, it was, you know, it was mm -hmm. whatever. But I was like, but it's... You know, but it's ugh, I should like be attracted to him. But like I no matter how late it got or like how many drinks I had, I was like, I just can't do it. dude. <laughs> like I should want to like uh, like make out with him or hang out with him or get to know him more. But like I just couldn't do it. I was like not attracted. It was not the same thing. I was like trying to get him to leave. You know, he didn't want to leave. He didn't want to leave. I finally like got him out the door. And, like, I went and laid down, and, like, five minutes later, like, the doorbell is, like, ringing on the thing. I go and, like, I think it might, I can't remember if it was the peephole or if there was, like, a camera that you could look. Like, a, I think it might have just been a peephole. I look out, and he's, like, standing outside the hotel room, like, swaying, like, Sarah, Sarah, open the door. Ew. And I'm just, like, standing there, like, trying to be really quiet, like, looking at him through the peephole. <laughs> like, he was there for, like many many minutes like wouldn't leave let me in let me in creepy Ew. no means no sir yeah but yeah I mean it all makes sense now with everything that's come out but Ew. oh my god oh that is so funny he you know he just thought for sure for sure. Oh, for, that's his, I mean, that's his life experience, I'm mm -hmm. sure, mm -hmm. you know. Anybody's going to let me in. Yeah. <laughs> Rude awakening, son. Yeah. We went to, like, an award show with Hef and all you guys, like, in L.A., like, a week later, and he was there, and we all walk <laughs> by his table, and he's like, Sarah, Sarah. No. And I'm, like, pretending, like, I don't hear him, and then we're, like, at the table, and I see, I can see him, like, waving out. He's like, Sarah, <laughs> Sarah, and I'm just, like, pretending like I don't see him. I'm like, what is this life where I'm, like, like hardcore, like, diving like this like a-list hunky celebrity and he's like sarah sarah and i'm just like i don't see you i'm obsessed <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> imagine upgrading your wardrobe with luxury essentials at unbeatable prices quince is here to transform the way you shop with a range of high quality items priced within reach like 100 percent mongolian cashmere sweaters for 50 bucks organic cotton sweaters washable silk tops and timeless 14 karat gold jewelry the best part all quince items are priced 50 to 80 percent less than similar brands by partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. And I love that. And I'm so excited because, Holly, you always talk about how you love your cashmere sweater. I finally got a cashmere sweater from them. It's my first cashmere sweater ever, and I love it. It's so soft, and it's so cozy, and it's so warm, but it's breathable. So even on days that are kind of warm, I can still wear it. I'm in love with it. It is so cozy. I'm so glad you love it because I love mine so much. It's my favorite staple. It's like you said, the coziest thing. 
you too can indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash next level for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash next level to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash next level. So right around 2008, we leave the mansion. Did you continue to be involved in the mansion? Did you ever live or stay at the bunny house after we left? Anything like that? No, I pretty much left like when you guys left. I think it was a combo of that was like an era that had come to an end with like you guys being gone that I like just Mm -hmm. didn't want to. I didn't want anything else, but also like I'd been there for so long. Mm -hmm. I think I'd lived there at that point for three maybe four years. I don't even know. It was a long time. It was time for me to move on, let new girls come in, you know, Mm. but I, I, and I was ready to like do that and move on my own and be able to have friends and boys come over, you know, or whatever. Cause you couldn't like do that. But it was also just cause like you guys weren't there and yeah, I just, I didn't really, I was ready to go. I just wanted to have those memories just be what they were and not try and make new ones. Yeah. So he started dating the twins and Crystal and You know, I'll start by saying I don't really know Crystal all that well at all. But she's always been very nice to me. I will say that. Every interaction I had, she's been nice. We, like, used to, like, promote each other's Instagrams, like, Mm -hmm. back in the day, long after all that. Um, Whatever. So I don't have, like, personal beef with her. But my one memory is, like, I was on my way out. And I got invited up to uh, to go play Uno with, I think, maybe one other playmate was up there. I don't recall who it was. But then it was the twins, Crystal Mm -hmm. and Hef. And I really didn't know them all that well. It's kind of awkward, but I got invited. So I went. And I felt very, like, protective of him. And even though, like, you all left on, like, your own accord, I just still felt like, who are these New girls, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's just, like, human nature. But um, we were playing, and, you know, he gets, like, pissy and irritable or whatever. And they were, like, you guys were always, like, sweet and professional in a way, like, if you will. And they were just, like, goofing off, like, not paying attention, whatever. And that was, like, frustrating him. And he was, like, getting visually frustrated because he wanted the game to move on and they weren't paying attention and they were just talking amongst themselves or whatever. And he gets frustrated and they're, like, rolling their eyes at him, like, God, and, like, whispering about him, like, to each other. And just, like, it was just all, like, really disrespectful. And, and like, I never saw that with you guys ever. Maybe you did, but, like, I never saw that. Like, there was always, like, a huge level of respect going on Mm -hmm. and care and love or, you know, whatever. And I just didn't see that. I saw people that, like, didn't seem to care about him, thought he was annoying, thought he was a joke. And so I hated it. I felt icky. I felt mad. I felt protective over him, you know, and yeah, that was it. And like, I never like went back up there. I just like left that experience and I just thought, oh, that's so shitty. Yeah. But there's things I've heard now, like interviews and granted, they're just like TikToks or clips I've seen of like her talking about her experience. And I haven't listened to it all or whatever and like whatever you could pull clips from this and people may like hate some things I said and it may seem shitty or whatever but like I heard a clip where she was like I didn't wear a white dress because I wanted to wear white like on my real wedding day like she knew she wasn't like it wasn't real but I just I'm like yeah I'm not surprised to hear that like yeah you didn't seem like you cared or respected then not surprised to hear you say that now. That's like really shitty thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just don't like that. Yeah, a lot of people were not fooled. I remember you telling me that story. I've heard similar stories from a lot of other people. And, mm-hmm. and I feel like the way you told it just sums it up kind of the way I feel about it too. Like, it, But I never really put it in those words, but I, I see it as a disrespect too. Mm-hmm. And as like people who didn't care and thought he was a joke and yeah. were like laughing about it and just, and like you said, didn't have that respect there. And I don't know how other people didn't see it. They didn't. No, I think people did. I think it was no, just No, some did, but there's obviously a lot that didn't. Or at least put a, up with it. Yeah, do you think there's a lot that didn't see it or do you think people just like to be on the bandwagons they're on and they don't want to speak up about certain people cuz it's not convenient? Well, or, that's ridiculous. If I know, everybody it's ridiculous, saw I agree. this, yeah. you know. That's interesting that mm-hmm. other people like saw it. I mean, it took one like hour long game and I was like ew yeah I heard it from a lot of people this is not good and I was really worried about him like oh gosh like 
who who are and he's getting older and more vulnerable like now like Mm -hmm. who are these people he's like going to be letting in his life and getting closer to him and whatever like I was worried about it but like what are you gonna do you know I gotta move on with my life Mm -hmm. he's an adult yeah you can't tell him anything anyway (laughs) right (laughs) so you weren't around during the whole runaway bride thing or I wasn't I remember like hearing about it or whatever I actually like went up there for like after that had happened I hadn't I, I like basically stopped like coming around I moved out and just moved on with my life. And, but after that happened, I went up there to go to movie night or whatever, just to like see him. I was kind of like worried about him. Mm, Like, I hope he's okay or whatever. And I saw him. I was like, I'm so sorry this happened. I was like, fuck her. Like, you deserve better, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, thank you. And then they got back together. I was like, well, I can't show face now. I was just, I was like, not too long ago, like talking shit about her to him. I'm like, fuck that girl. <laughs> but um, now they're married. So that's awkward. <laughs> yeah, but- I think a lot of people felt like that. Like I remember Kevin, the producer saying, if he takes her back, I'm never going up there again. And of course he did go up there again. Yeah. But I think everybody kind of felt like that. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. So was that the last time you saw Hef then? I think it might have been. Maybe I went to like an Easter or something like that. You know, possibly. I don't remember the last or last time I saw him, no. What about the mansion? When's the last time you went to the mansion? Same. It would have been the same time. It would have either been like that movie night. For some reason, I feel like it might have been an Easter. I went up there like years later. I do remember going to an Easter years later and like seeing him and he just seemed so old and like not really there. He wasn't down there for very long. I wasn't even sure if he like knew who I was mm, type yeah. of thing. Mm-hmm. And you know, like that's so sad. And like, I just didn't didn't want to keep going back and seeing it's hard, you know, like yeah. that, so. Yeah, um, where, where were you when you heard he passed? I was, got on a, I was on an airplane. I think I was in Vegas and I got a text from my dad and he was like, I'm so sorry to tell you this baby girl. And he like sent me a link and like I just boarded the plane and sat down and I like started bawling and like called him. I called my partner Jacob at the time and like crying to him and like, yeah, it was really sad. I shot a look at Holly because we were That's both on planes weird. too. Were you? We were all yeah. on planes. Yeah, I was, okay, this story's weird. So I was doing a shoot in Vegas at this like Airbnb place and the person who owned it had, and I didn't know they had this, they had one of the Playboy pinball machines. And you know how pinball machines will just like go off by themselves and you'll hear the little noise and stuff. And I was standing outside and I heard this tune and I was like, what is that tune? It sounds so familiar because I'd been away from Playboy for like years at this point. Yeah. I hadn't heard the Playboy theme, which is like what it would play on the pinball machine. And I was like, what is that? Is that like the Simpsons theme? Like I'm trying to think, what is that jingle? And it took me forever to figure out, oh, that's the Playboy theme. That's what it was. Oh, haha, funny. So then I flew back to LA that night. And the second the plane landed, I got an email from somebody, a reporter in Vegas saying, oh, Hef just passed away. Do you have anything to say about it? And I thought that is creepy. Wow. But weird that we were all on planes. That is really weird. That's a weird coincidence. And we were both landing around the same time, and I was hoping we were at the same airport so that we could kind of, like, ditch out of there together. But I think you were landing in Burbank, Burbank, and I was landing at LAX, and I was so worried when I got off the plane that, like, there was going to be paparazzi or something. But I got out of there Were you guys, like, expecting that? Did you – had you, like, kept up with – sorry, I'm, like, interviewing you guys now, but I'm so (laughs) curious. Like, had you kept up with, like, his health or, like, where he was at? Like, was that a thing that – was known was go- maybe going to happen soon? Was he in hospice or like anything? I don't know anything. Well, they were very secretive toward the end. I remember there was a lot of crazy rumors I would see. Like people would accuse them of like, oh, Hef's dead and you're just hiding him. It was almost like, it, like it wasn't as big as this, but you know how like nobody can find Kate Middleton right now? Right. It was almost like that. Or like they would throw a Midsummer Night's Dream party and they'd post a picture of Hef at the party, but it was from the year before. Mm -hmm. It was like just kind of weird stuff. And I wasn't super keeping up with it or anything. And when it happened, like I wasn't too surprised just because, you know, he was so much older and his health seemed like it had been declining so much over the years. So, but I really didn't know anything that was going on in the Playboy world the last couple of years because everything was just so weird and secretive and I wasn't in touch with Mm -hmm. anybody. I'd already written my book at this point. Mm -hmm. So like I super wasn't talking to anybody. So this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. How is your social battery right now? I know mine is just bursting with energy at the moment. Like I have all these projects I want to do, all these things. And I think it's because it's like springtime and we're heading into summer. The weather's getting nicer and I'm ready to like go out and just conquer a bunch of things. 
but I know it won't take long before I start to feel drained. And it can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves too thin, especially with social gatherings picking up after the winter. What's the right amount of socializing for you? And how do you recharge? Maybe you thrive around people or maybe you need some more alone time. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. Therapy has been so helpful for me just understanding my neurodivergence and how I operate the way I do. I feel like it's given me some social skills and just helped me be more okay with who I am and be able to function and handle most of the things that life throws at me. Therapy can be very beneficial. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash next level today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash next level. I had been trying to go up um, because I was writing a book and I wanted to kind of just talk to him about it. I wanted his blessing. I know mm. I don't need it, but I just sort of wanted to out of mm. respect. And they wouldn't let me come up. They kept like ignoring my requests Who's or never they? getting back to Who me. Who are you reaching out to? The office. So it was Amanda Warren and Helen. I don't even know, who, know Helen who Helen is. is. Me who the neither. fuck is Helen? Yeah. Oh I said that. I, I actually said that to her. I was like, Helen, I don't even know who the fuck you are. Like, where, where did you come from? Iconic. And then, um, and Crystal, they said it was straight those three people. Wow. Amanda, and, what the hell? Oh, yeah. She turned. that. Did she? And th- and then I heard he was sick. So then I was trying extra hard to come mm-hmm. up because now I wanted to like see him and like kind of say goodbye because he was really sick, mm-hmm. you know. He was. And they still wouldn't let me come up. So I tried to d- come up for two years and was told no, at least a year and a half. That sucks because I know he would have loved to have seen you. Like there's no way he got that memo. There's well, no not no if way. you listen to Crystal. Crystal says that he never mentioned my name, did not care about me. Bullshit. Like, did that and that we were not significant in his life. Bullshit. Yeah. That's bullshit. I don't mm-hmm. I mean, I can say that so confidently. <laughs> yeah. I can say that so unless he had dementia, like maybe, <laughs> you know, he was saying that. Yeah. Not significant cuz he actually can't remember, but like if that's not the case then I just call bullshit on that. Yeah. Right. Same. He that's what to I told her too. You. I told them that. And then um Cooper had the last Midsummer Night's Dream party in 2017 and he invited me and I went. What was Cooper and them not able? Which did you try and reach out to them at so the So I asked Cooper at that party, I told him that I'd been trying to come up and could he get me up? And he said, um, you know, I don't know if I can, blah, blah. It's like really weird around here. Like he mm. didn't have control. But he said, give me your number. And if I ever can, I'll let you know. So I gave him my number. And then like a week later, he called me and said, can you come up to Buffet on Sunday? I can get you up here on Sunday. And they couldn't go because I was out of town. Dang. And then he died. Right after that? Well, that was uh, – the midsummer party was like – I'm just guessing on the date, but end of August, I think. I think it was like August 22nd. They used to be earlier in August, but this one, I remember it was later. But whatever the date, it was sort of mid to end of August. And then, you know, he called my, me like a week later and said, I can get you on on Sunday. And then he died September 17th. Wow. So – Dang, that's so awful. And then Sad. just the stories that I've heard from the butlers and the people that were there – I see. I don't know any of that. I I don't like. I don't know. Like I'm, I my therapist says I'm emotionally avoidant. So like <laughs> I don't. I don't want like I don't want the bad like stuff in a way because I just had this like really great experience. Like and this it was this amazing, fun, exciting time in mm-hmm. my life that like. I'm like, I just want to protect that like little bubble. And so when mm-hmm. I really haven't like kept up with a lot of that stuff because like I just I think I do it. that too. Yeah. Well, it's stressful. Like even for me, it is like stressful. I've been out there and I've talked about a lot of it. But when I see other people's stories, even if it's people I can totally relate to and support, like I had nightmares every yeah. night when Secrets of Playboy was out. Like, and even yes. when Crystal's book came out, like I was telling Bridget, I'm like, I feel like depressed this week and really like stressed out. And I think it's all her bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Even in preparation when we before we started this podcast, we were reading some of the books that other people had written mm-hmm. about us and Playboy and Hef and stuff. I was telling Holly, this is like really 
like I feel like I'm reliving the Mean Girls era, mm. and like it's just really hard so emotionally. Stressful. But what you were saying is like just remembering the good and like have, mm-hmm. keep it in that bubble. Like I feel like I totally do that too. Yeah, absolutely. I tried to – I start – Jacob and I started the Secrets of Playboy. I think it's the, the one on A&E. Mm-hmm. Like we couldn't get through like the first episode. I was having like anxiety like about it. Yeah. And whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. It's the reality. So you weren't invited to the funeral or anything, No. Right? I was really – that was really bummed about that. Like, what? whatever, like, his, I don't know who made those decisions. Um, in my mind, I would think that Hef would have wanted all the playmates and everybody around. But funerals aren't for the dead, they're for the living, right? It's not, so, like, the ones closest to him, maybe they just wanted to keep it small, which I guess I can understand, I can totally understand, you know, but I do think that he would have wanted everybody there and I would have loved to have gone. We all know Hef and we know what he would have wanted. He was so welcoming to every playmate that ever yeah. came in. He was so welcoming to every ex-girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Like, he would have wanted all of them there. Yeah. I, I, it just it seemed really strange for me from for someone that you know that that's how they would have wanted to, <laughs> to go out with just, like, everybody who, whose life he's touched and impacted, like, to be there celebrating his life. So it was it was a very – it was a very large juxtaposition to, like, what the man himself, in my mind, would have wanted. So moving away from the sad onto mm-hmm. your life after Playboy. So you hosted a really popular show called Attack of the Show. Yeah. Tell everybody what that is if they don't know and what it was like being on that. Yeah, so it was like a geek pop culture show. That's the best way I can describe it. Like Olivia Munn was like the host, the female host on it for like a long time. And then um, I sort of started getting involved as she was going out. And it was like a live daily variety show around like geek stuff. And man, those two, Playboy and, well, the girls next door too, and G4 TV, Attack of the Show, were just like the three things that have like had the biggest impact on my life. Like Attack of the Show has a huge cult following. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't the biggest show. It wasn't the most popular, but man, that fan base is like amazing. Um, So yeah, it was really fun. I did it for like I don't even know. Many years I was doing live TV. Again, I was like super stressful. Like I loved mm-hmm. it. Like, but I like I hated it. I had to be this like big outgoing personality and like I could only take it for so long. Um, like kind of keeping up that face. And I basically like disappeared after that. I was like, okay, I have been in the public eye being this personality, entertaining, like, for so long. And I'm so grateful. And I did have a lot of fun, but it was never who I was. Yeah. And so after that, I just, like, dipped out. I went and, like, did yoga teacher training in San oh, Diego cool. and got, like, certified to teach yoga. But then I realized I actually had to, like, talk in front of people and teach, which is, like, <laughs> I don't want to do that. So then I, like, went back to – I went and, like, finished a couple classes I needed to like finish at school and I was gonna like go get like a regular job Mm -hmm. and then I started like a couple I had a sort of I had a little bit of an Instagram following from Attack of the Show and I started getting offers to like post for like protein shake or Mm -hmm. like something like that and like get paid and like I was like oh there's like money in social media this was a long time ago Mm -hmm. and um so I started getting money from that and I was like oh if I keep creating content for my social media I can grow it and then more people will pay me to like sell their product and so then I started focusing on that and that's what I've been doing like basically since. That's awesome. And yeah. did you continue working for Playboy at all after you left the mansion? Because didn't you do some like cool Star Wars pictorial for like Playboy Online or something? Yeah, that was like just like a one-off like thing. Because, it was so cute. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it was fun. It wasn't a pictorial. It was just like um, – it was like Star Wars themed. We did like a 1-800 – um, Jedi commercial where I was like a sexy Yoda. It was like they were trying to create like a funny or die type like yeah. little like funny clips that would like go viral. So I went to the studio and we like shot these like it was really good and like really funny clips. It was, it was just something they were kind of like dipping their toe in. Mm-hmm. And so it was different. Like I didn't like get nude. I don't think. No, I don't think I even did any like nudity. It was just like some funny like stuff. But that's kind of that's that's it. When I was done, I was like done. 
That's awesome. And as far as Instagram, what was that like as like a creative outlet for you? Because I, I know you have a very like distinct style that's very unique. And I feel like, I mean, just from a spectator's point of view, I feel like it's such a good creative outlet for you to show like who you are and like mm -hmm. all the nature and everything. Like even before, you know, you and Jacob started Cabin Land, I felt like your Instagram kind of had this theme of like travel and nature yeah. and it was really cool. Yeah. I mean, I always liked the outdoors. I was always into hiking. I'm like, okay, I like those things things I'm good at modeling like wh how can I how can I make this something interesting something different than just like you know being a model like on a couch and taking some pictures and posting it on Instagram like everybody every, every Instagram model is doing that how can I how can I be different how can I create a niche how can I stand out to cry to try and grow this so yeah it was it was really it was like the first time like my whole life I'd go to shoots and the shoots had been planned, the wardrobe had been picked, the makeup, mm -hmm. the themes, the, all of it. And like, I started, like I picked the photographer, I picked the outfits, I picked the trips I'd plan, like, you know, like two week road trips with me and a photographer and my mom. And mm -hmm. we would like hike hours up to this beautiful place and like take these pictures and it would, you know, be all like my creative vision. And it was just so much more fulfilling in that way. Like there was, I, I love everything and all the experiences that's, that I did have. But like, for me, that was like really kind of coming into my own and like, having my own like business and creative That's ideas. So cool. Yeah, it was fun. So anybody who follows you on social media knows your boyfriend, Jacob. How did you guys meet? Yeah, so I was like in that like element of trying to like model in front of like beautiful scenery, beautiful mm -hmm. places, all that stuff. And his, he built, well, he's a, he was a second grade teacher. And on the side, he would build these like really whimsical artesian cabins with like moss hanging off and like I mean they were just so unique and beautiful and they were like these two cabins in particular just like kept coming across my Instagram feed and they were so I mean whatever my thing wasn't shooting in front of houses or whatever mm -hmm. I would hike in front of a mountain or a lake but like his cabins were like so special and I was like oh my gosh I want to shoot in front of these and so I found some page that seemed like they owned it or whatever. And this girl like ran the page and she was, she kind of like claimed like the cabins as her own, which we, since oh, we like got together, he's like, that's weird. <laughs> but she's like, yeah, you can come shoot at one of our cabins. The own, or the person that built it is actually like going to be there. It wasn't her cabins. Um, but he's going to be there if you want to go up there and shoot. And I was like, yes, absolutely. It was in, they were um, both, in, I was in the Pacific Northwest. They were in the Pacific Northwest. So I was like, okay, great. So she put me in touch with him over Instagram and we started talking and he's like, just so you know, and he sent himself because most of his Instagram was just pictures of his cabins. Mm -hmm. I had no idea who he was, what he looked like. And he sent me like a picture of himself and he was like, just, so you know, this is me, whatever. And like, he was a young, like handsome guy. And I was like, weird. Why are you sending me a picture of yourself <laughs> or whatever? I was like, okay, cool. Right on. Bro. Um, I was like, so anti-man at that point in my life. I was like, like single, didn't want anybody. Like it didn't, like, I was like, okay, cool, whatever. I'm coming there to shoot your cabins. And I get there and he greeted me and the photographer. I like pulled up in like my big old truck with my big old camper that like I was driving around shooting all these places at. And like, it was love at first sight, like instantly. Oh my like God. we like stayed up. He showed me around the property where his cabins were built and we – just talk, 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 never stopped talking, stayed, sat around the campfire all night. And then we were going to leave. And he's like, what? I want to take you for a hike. You guys, I know this amazing hike that like you, you guys could shoot at up there. And so he took us for a hike the next day and he like assisted the photographer. Like he was like blocking the sun, like for me. And I was like modeling like nude mm -hmm. in front of him. <laughs> and like, it was, yeah, it was just, it was really amazing. And then that night, like, he, he, like, asked me to come back and, like, hang out with him, like, one-on-one -on -one sometime and asked me out and, like, the rest was history. Oh, my God. And what, how long story. ago was that? Oh, my gosh. That was, like, five, six years, six years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about Cabin Land, your project you guys are working on. Yeah. I don't know what it is. We're just, like, winging it. Um, so we started dating and he went he was teaching um second grade in Boston and I went and like lived with him out there and we both kind of he's always wanted to like create have a pro piece of property of his own and build these cabins and like I also had not build the cabins but like for my 30th birthday I went and stayed at Hicksville have you guys ever been there in I've Joshua heard of it, Tree? Yeah. it's just like all these like 
cute little themed like trailers and stuff like that. I was like, I want to run, like I want to run a resort, like a resort like that sometime. We came up with this dream that we were going to like build cabins at like a little cabin resort and rent it out. And that's how we were going to like live the rest of our lives running this place. And we're going to build this together. And so uh, he quit his job teaching second grade and we like built a truck, like we built a cabin on back of a truck. And that was our first project we built together. And we drove it from the East Coast over to the Pacific Northwest because that's where we met. And that's like just kind of where both of our hearts were. And we started like looking for property and we found this place that was just green and mossy and big old trees and it was just perfect and that's where we're like doing what we call cabin land which is just we're trying to build all these cabins to one day like rent out to people and we run it and that's what I'm able to retire on and yeah that's our goals for our future and it's just been really fun that's That's so so exciting it's so cute too and you're doing like an Arizona one too right yeah because we live we're like um in a temperate rainforest it's like so dark so rainy like not Portland weather, not Seattle weather, like 10 times worse. And Whoa. like the first year I had Holly's nightmare. <laughs> yeah. nightmare. I thought I could handle it because I'm like, whatever, I'm from Portland, yeah. you know. Um, no, I had crazy seasonal depression that first year that we were out there. It it rains like, I, I don't even know what the inches are, but it's it's like five times as much as Seattle gets or something like that. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, I was like, I was like, well, we need to road trip every winter I need to get out of here for like a month and get some like sun because I was unwell and so the first year we went to road trip or the second year we went and road tripped and we got down in Arizona and just like we're like fell in love with it and found a property on that first trip and like bought it and we're like okay let's do let's do cabin land in the Pacific Northwest like for half the year and then let's come down here and let's do it again down here for the other half of the year. So we just split our time. Like we're building up both properties now. That's ingenious. I love that. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I love a little back and forth. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Favorite mansion memory. Mm, favorite. I mean, oh my gosh, there's so much favorite. I guess for me, like it would be like the movie nights were always my favorite. Was it Sunday ha- that had the new ones? Mm-hmm. Okay, I thought it was Sunday. Couldn't remember if it was Saturday or Sunday. I loved. I'm a big movie buff. I we'd always get like either it wasn't out been out in theater yet or it was in theater and have we get like the private showings and I would always go lay on the pillows like in front of you guys where you guys sat on the couch with. Um, like Allison and Janine and we'd have popcorn and we would have movie or we'd have dinner with you guys like beforehand and I don't know that was like my like Sunday night movie night was my favorite time every week at the mansion just that moment laying in the pillows eating popcorn with Allison and Janine and you guys sitting behind us and watching like a brand new blockbuster movie that was out (laughs) that was my favorite what was the weirdest or funniest thing you remember from the mansion? Mm, okay, so <laughs> <laughs> our craziest story. I had a lot of crazy stories. I like I guess one it was like a a wake up call or like to how like for the most part, like I'd seen Playboy be pretty tame. Like even the parties or whatever, there'd be celebrities and there'd be naked painted ladies, but I don't know. Like I never really had seen anything crazy. I think it was I think it was three, six mafia was performing and there was like a bunch of painted ladies up on the stage and I don't know, like, you know, they're naked. And then three, six mafia was performing. I was drinking. And one of the painted ladies was like on the stage and started like eating the other painted lady out. Cause she was like buck naked. <laughs> and like, I was just like, where am I? What is this world? Oh my God. How did we miss that? I know the exact party you're talking you about, do? Well, but that was hacked on stage. So it? we wouldn't have necessarily seen details. Yeah. It was half 80th birthday. Yeah. Yeah. I was like right there. I was like in front, like jamming out to like with three six mafia and like the, the, one of the painted ladies was just like eh, like just going to town. <laughs> Did she get pain on her face? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I like blacked out. I was like, "What is happening?" Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, because I have the video from that party now. I want to go. You're gonna back have to go. Look. Look. I know. You're oh have my to look. god. Oh, it happened. <laughs> uh, it's burned in my brain. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. That is a crazy memory. It was like straight out of like a rap song, you know, just like <laughs> they were just up there singing and the girls were going going to town. 
That is nuts. Um, can I back up one second? Yeah. Because I was just remembering the in the cabin land stuff. You guys did a hot tub, right? Oh, we've done yeah, we've done a few now. Like in a tree. Yes. So, like it's so funny. We keep doing like hot tubs because the the reality is is like we spend all this time building these like cabins and putting all this effort into it. But the ones that like go the thing that goes the viral the most every time are hot tubs. Like the first one we built was just a wood. It was you burn fire and we put like a horse trough on top of like a fire Mm -hmm. and that went crazy viral. Like it was nothing more than like all the cabins we'd built and everything. We're like, what the heck? This is just a (laughs) horse trough. (laughs) And so we've, we've since like, you know, kind of been doing a lot of like hot tubs because people like love that or whatever, but we're like, okay, now we got to like, that was just like for funsies and that went crazy. Mm -hmm. So we've been like, you know, trying to be creative and have fun with hot tubs and we've done like, there was this giant tree that had been like – that had fallen over and I'd drive by it like every day. It was massive, like insanely big tree. It was just laying there, laying there, laying there for like six months. And I was finally to Jacob. I was like, we got to do something like with that. What if we like get a chunk of it and we carve it out and we like turn it into a hot tub? So we did that and that was a hit. And then we like took the rest of the tree because we stood it up like a stump. Like mm-hmm. it had like – just the bottom half like and so then you're sitting in it like a stump and we're like okay what if we take the other part of the tree and like tip it over and carve that out like it like fell over and make another hot tub and so we did that now we just made another one in Arizona with like a bunch of sandstone and it's just so fun creating together we like get we get a bunch of white claws every time we like do it come up with like a new design we have date night we get dressed up we drink a couple white claws and like he gets his like drawing pad out and we start like talking about like what it's gonna look like and we like that's so fun. I want to design one. I'm like, yeah. I've got ideas. Oh you have such great <laughs> ideas. Please. I'm like, I'm like, wait, I've got ideas. Let's. I want to collaborate on one. Yes, please share. <laughs> the desert one is so freaking cute. Oh, thank you. The one you. That you guys just did. Thank you. That's so cool. Thank you. You guys need like an HGTV show about all this. Yeah, we're trying. We've, we've been honestly like trying for like a really long time. We even like shot what they call an act one for – a big network it's whatever it would be nice it would be cool but we're having fun no matter what yeah it would be such an amazing show yeah thanks thanks anyone Mm -hmm. let's pick up a show (laughs) (laughs) remember when hef let me go to vegas with you overnight to go see your ex in the comedy show oh my gosh yes and that was such a huge breakthrough yes i got to go with you oh it was crazy it was major and no security polly was still around though right at that point yeah you were still there but it was like um i was so scared to ask that's right that was like your first together yes Because I had been allowed to go and do, like, some appearances and stuff, but always, like, with security and, like, that kind of thing. But this was the first time I got to just go That's right. That was such a big moment that you, like, were free, like, on your own out there. And we just, like – we had the best time. We We had so much fun. And it was, like, one of the – it was towards the end. Yeah. It was very much towards the end. Like, I think I already knew I had the Beaches show coming up Mm. and – like, I knew I was sort of, like, one foot out the door already, mm-hmm. but I still was living there, still had to have his permission. Yeah. And yeah, that was huge. Yeah. It's really nice to see you guys again, though. You like, too. And you guys look exactly the same. So do you. <laughs> Crazy. It's, been so it's weird. I feel like I just went in a time warp. Like, I know. Just looking at you guys. Feeling, it's so sure. weird. Like, <laughs> what, a, what a whirlwind that time of my life was. Yeah. Totally. For all of us. So thank you so much for joining us. We'll certainly have Sarah back in the future. For more content, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. For more content, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel.